Good morning, everyone. Pastor Songbei here from Lighthouse Global. Um, I just wanted to come for day two. I know this week I felt like there was a, um, you know, the Lord wanted me to release these words. I'm just being diligent and faithful to what God's putting in my heart. Um, I hope this word blesses you. I think it actually, it, it's really going to challenge you, actually. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for mighty wind of God to just come and blow over this broadcast. I pray for repentance. I pray for calling higher. I pray that you will give us revelation in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Great to see you. Yes, yes, yes. It's kind of early in the morning. Um, let me just uh, give you a word that God's given me this morning. Um, it was repentance. It was repenting of spiritual adultery. And I was um, driving and I, I was just kind of thinking about the secret place with the Lord and, and uh, repenting of spiritual adultery. So I'm going to address today an issue of spiritual adultery and I really feel that we're in a season where God's really calling us higher so this is a prophetic uh, word of the Lord is that the prophetic word is that God is calling us higher God is calling us higher God is calling us to be more holy more consecrated more clean before the Lord to, to set us set ourselves apart for greater things of God and you know when I release these big prophecies of like revival coming harvest coming God doing amazing things it's not just a bluff where um, I'm, I'm giving you good news, but actually when I release a word, there's always a requirement of what God asks of us um, to rise up to. And I really felt like today God was highlighting spiritual adultery. So I'm pointing out what is spiritual adultery? I don't have any notes with me, so this is kind of spontaneous. Um, let's actually rumble. Let's pray in tongues. Rumble, rumble. Shakaraba, shikata da da, kewa yara la yaroba, shuko do do do, kewa yara la yaraba, shikata da 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 da. Kawa, pray in tongues with me. Shakaraba, shikata da 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 da, kewa yara la yara in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, um, spiritual adultery is when you are committing adultery in your heart or in your spirit or in your soul. Basically, that you are um, uh, committing adultery in your heart with people that are not assigned to you. They're not your spouse. They're not your spouse. So I was reminded of a story that um, actually I think it was written in the book, Cindy Jacobs's book about um, when her earlier books. She was uh, sharing a story of how you know she was getting to the prophetic. She was really learning a lot, and uh, she had a pastor. Uh, an older pastor who she looked up to and I think the story goes she would reach out to him and they would talk and and um, uh, even apart from her, her husband she would talk to this man a lot and how um, the Lord one day convicted her that that is that is not of God that she should not do that not to have that kind of intimate relationship with somebody else that's not your spouse and so she said she repented and she was pointing that out and um, it totally resonated with my spirit because this, this issue of spiritual adultery is so rampant and it is so unidentified. It is so, um, it's very rampant and I'm trying to shed light on it and this may shake some of you and you might be offended by it, but I'm still going to go there because um, it's really about the heart. You know, in the Bible, Jesus says, Jesus was very gracious to the prostitutes, right? And he actually pointed out, he said that um, whoever looks at a woman and sins in his heart is, is a sinner. That's a sin before the Lord. When we define sin, it's really about the issue of the heart. And I really believe in this season, God is really dealing with the hearts of the people. The heart. But your heart, you, only, you, you, you need to have a revelation about what's really in your heart. You need to keep your heart pure and holy. You need to keep your heart... Um, consecrated before the Lord it's not the action because you say oh I never did that no your heart was evil no I never did that pastor I was good to this but you know I was being kind but your heart was evil so this these issues of the heart you have to go real deep and I really feel like there's such a rampant adultery inside the church among Christians um, and uh, discernment to me is very easy meaning discernment is easier than you think it is because what you sense your instinct a lot of you are already discerning a lot of you are already prophetic when you feel like as a, as a woman when you feel like somebody's a little creepy they are creepy you don't have to second guess that you know when you f <laughs> how many of you know what i'm talking about i mean it's rather some of the men are a little less discerning than women but i feel like as a woman so far in my whole life when i look back at my first instinct when I meet somebody and I sense something and I sense something very uneasy, it's always proven to be right. And I feel like over, you know, uh, over 40 years of my life, you know, when I just kind of 
and look back, I was always accurate, but nobody really confirmed it. I didn't have anybody to talk to. But as a woman, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When you have a man approaching you and you feel creepy, you feel like there's some intention in them, it's most likely 100% correct, accurate. But there's nothing to prove it, right? Um, because they're going to deny it and, and gaslight you. So, so I just want to say, like, in the body of Christ, even now, and I just feel that... Um, the Lord is really highlighting it. He's basically, the prophetic word is God is calling you higher. God is calling you higher and repent for spiritual adultery. And the thing is, um, you know, there are a lot of men around me even now. Um, recently, I had to cut off somebody out of my life because um, I felt like it was creepy. <laughs> and, you know, women especially, and women especially, repeat after me. I can't say no. Repeat after me. I can't say no. I will say no. In Jesus name you need to say no you need to say no yes human trafficking yes sexual uh, immorality all of those things it's it's an issue it's a spiritual thing but also we didn't teach our girls we didn't teach our women how to say no repeat after me I can say no I can say no so you have to say no you have to say no and and in the name of God in the name of being a pastor in the name of being a spiritual father in the name of being whatever these men are are roaming about all these women uh, prowling to to devour them and I know it sounds really extreme but I'm, I'm going there I'm, I feel like God is calling us higher to repent of allowing spiritual adultery in our lives in our hearts you know the Bible says Jesus said whatever you think upon a woman in your heart you've already committed sin so it's really a matter of, of the heart and the Lord is really calling us higher to keep our hearts pure and and purify and just repent you know these men um, you know when you feel like somebody's messaging you somebody sent you a message and it feels like there's a there's an agenda or an intention or there's a hook like um, they have some issues of their own and they kind of want your attention or they want um, <clears throat> they want something more than just a regular friendship. You just need to really watch out. Um, like I said, the, the you know what Cindy Jacobs wrote in her book really challenged me, of even like pastoral relationship. And so I know a lot of a lot of men around me. They consider me as their spiritual mentor. They consider me as their um, spiritual mother. And that's that's fine. That's fine. But there is a line of discernment that I will not allow any a man of any age to come close to me and claim me or say that they are my, uh, you know, whatever, you know, there, there's a level of intimacy. I thought about it, the realm of intimacy. So you are absolutely, uh, you need to protect your realm of intimacy with Jesus. And let me tell you, it's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. You cannot even in the name of a spouse, like, oh, he's my husband, so he can do anything to me. No, he cannot. There has to be a line. Even if you're married, even if you're married, even if you're married, you need to have a healthy boundary where your spouse doesn't control your spiritual life, that you have a higher intimacy with Jesus. And you know, when I was at Yale, Yale uh, there's a secret society there, and uh, lots of secret societies at Yale. Um, one of the most famous ones, um, skull and bones and I had some friends some people that I knew that were in skull and bones and I've heard some stories of how they do these rituals and they have these secret um, pact or contract secret um, co you know contract with one another like a like a ritual of some sort and whatever that goes on inside the secret society they're told not to even tell their spouse so their spouse don't even know what goes on even after they, they graduate and get married no those secret packs, it's a place of intimacy they created, right, in the secret societies. Well, you need to have an absolutely sacred place with the Lord where that place is so holy that you don't let anybody in, in that place with you and the Lord. It's a secret society between you and the Lord. It's a secret society between you and the Lord. It's a realm that you need to protect. It's a realm that you need to protect. It's a realm that you need to protect with you and Jesus. And you have to push out everything that is not of God. And you need to, that's where the life flows. That's where the, the, the power flows. That is where the, the Holy Spirit flows. That is the well that you keep. You need to keep your secret society, your secret place with the Lord holy and um, consecrated. You can't let other people in. So I'm telling you, even if you are married, you need to think about these things because 
you know, if you're married to a, a, a non-Christian or if you're married to somebody that despises the Holy Spirit, you let this person bully you in your spirit world, in your spirit life, you're going to be bullied. You're big, and you're going to use the Bible to be bullied. Like this person is, despises the Holy Spirit, but is using the word of God. Like you need to, woman, you need to submit to me. So as a wife, you try to submit to somebody that is violating your relationship with Jesus. You need to think about these things. So, Father, I pray that there'll be a constant Christian today there'll be a cutting off there'll be a um, repentance and enlightenment of these spiritual adultery we how we allow adulterous spirits to roam about us and we we allow it and actually another thing is that people actually enjoy this kind of um, crossing over and like gray areas you need to be careful with those gray areas okay <laughs> oh you know uh, you know uh, there was a, there there's somebody that will call me after 10 and want to talk to me you know if somebody wants to call me after 10 they know that i have kids that's a big problem for me that is a big problem you calling me after 10 and you want to talk for two hours mm -mm, i'm not gonna have that in jesus name mm -mm -mm. <laughs> You know, uh, just be very respectful. Don't call me after after 11 unless it's like emergency, you know mm -mm. Women of God don't do that. Don't allow things like that in your life And why are you why are you telling me all these things for two or three hours when you can talk to your pastor about it? You know if a, if a male you, you need to find the man of God to talk to you about it. if you want to talk to me Come early in the morning at 9 for 30 minutes and that's it <laughs> And so it's just strange, it's strange and how people can use their spiritual power or pastoral position or their um, authority to approach you in that way. This, these things are only things that God needs to reveal. In the, in, he needs to reveal it as a sin for people to come into repentance. And this is why we've had situations, I, I, I can't remember the man of God that, that recently died, who people realized that he had all these people that that would cater to him sexually outside of his ministry i mean that is so disgusting when you think about it how is that possible in the body of christ and how is this man able to preach the gospel to thousands and thousands of people and how was it that nobody was able to point this out to him nobody was able to redeem him nobody was able to be like a nathan to him you know you think about these things and it's just it's in the body of christ yes we're all sinful yes we need to forgive them but in terms of having a platform like that in terms of having a ministry influence like that that is a serious problem and uh the sins of the the, the church falls on the church not just on one person so i'm challenging you god is calling us higher repent of spiritual adultery god is calling us higher repent of spiritual adultery that is the word today but Father, I pray that we would we would respond to the call of God to go higher in every way, that our hearts will be pure and holy, that we would not deviate, we would not entertain these spirits, we would not entertain the gray areas. Don't entertain the gray areas. I rebuke you in Jesus' mighty name. Don't entertain the gray areas. Don't allow that in your life when you know that this is a gray area. For example, you are attacked because you're watching a horrible movie or a very sexual movie and you know that you are tempted, you have that temptation to lean in those directions. You know that that's an issue. Well, why are you allowing that gray area to be open in your life? Why are you calling your friends and watching that terrible movie or, uh, you know, like gray move like a movie that's tempting why are you doing that why are you allowing that in your life don't do it don't do it so father i pray that you will call us higher i pray for spirit of repentance to come upon this hour in jesus mighty mighty name god is calling a pure bride of christ so father i pray for revelation and release the purity in people's hearts right now in jesus mighty mighty name go same for the um same same gender you know women and women Men and men and men you know it's it's the same thing it's it's a it's an issue of intimacy it's an issue of sick uh, secret place with the Lord you know you have a sec secret place with the Lord that is absolutely the number one priority don't let anybody into that place don't let anybody into all of your little secrets all of your um, secret revelations about what God told you about you you need to keep that sacred. You need to keep that boundary straight. And out of that place of abundance with your relationship with Jesus, that's how the ministry flows. That's how the life flows. 
Father, we push away every human spirit that is not supposed to be in our sphere in Jesus' mighty name. I release supernatural discernment today in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. I release supernatural discernment today in Jesus' mighty name. Women of God, men of God, you are more discerning than you think. Men of God, men of God, discern the Delilahs. Discern the Delilahs. Love is not love when it's you are blinded by love, but that's not it. You can't allow you cannot allow Delilah's in your life. Father, I pray for uh just uh, uh eyes to be open today. Of some of the men I'm seeing in the spirit, some of the men have allowed Delilah's in their lives and they're not quite seeing that this person is a Delilah. Because you allow this Delilah in your life, God cannot fulfill the fullness of everything he has for you. Either you choose your calling or you choose your Delilah and use your lose your power. Shaka, you choose the way you will go. God is saying right now, Father, I pray that these Delilahs will be cut off and that men of God would discern the Delilah spirit and they will push it away. They would have the inner strength to push these things away in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. This is the word of the Lord. You know, Delilahs and Jezebels and these women, they use the strength of women to tempt men. They use the the beauty of women to tempt men. For example, women are very emotional. So if you got a girl who is weeping in front of you and saying, oh, my daddy didn't love me. Oh, you know, my husband left me. Oh, you know, um, I, I need this. And they're crying. Women, Men are really uh, sensitive to women crying in front of them, right? So you're crying and crying. And, and that's how the women, Delilahs, will tempt you. They'll use the strength of woman to bring temptation to you. So don't fall for that in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, pastor, I need inner healing. Oh, you know, this is what I went through. This is my past season, and this is how I was abused. Oh, they're crying. And the men of justice think that they're going to go and rescue these women. No, she's just a Delilah that wants to get into get into your life. I cut that off in Jesus' name. I pray for high level discernment. I pray for repentance. I pray for high, high level discernment in this hour to be released. Wisdom of God. And some of you younger people, you need older people to tell you what they see because you know, people see stuff. You, some of the things that you cannot discern, you need people of experience to help you discern things. So I pray, God, that you will give us discernment in every way. And you will bring the, the wise voices, older men and women, who will cover with discernment in this hour in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. There's so much manipulation. There's so much um, deceiving spirits right now all around that, that, that um, this area of having a secret place with the Lord and spiritual adultery is such a big issue. Now, spiritual adultery, how does it come into your life? Also, it comes in through uh, the form of intercession or the form of, oh, I'm praying for you. Don't let anybody else pray for you. Like, don't pray for me if you're carrying a spirit of Delilah <laughs> or don't pray for me if you're going to be a Jezebel. You know, you can be, uh, most Jezebels um, are, they, they reside in prayer rooms and prayer meetings and so that's why we need we need to continually teach people how to be spiritually clean how to be spiritually set don't give your credit card information don't don't expose your uh, private life don't let anybody come into your private life uh, and let them have all this information about your private life now I've you know I've had lots of um, failures in my own past of how um, I I guess I didn't um, quite understand I really thought that a lot of my close uh, spiritual sons and daughters were like my family and so I let them in my life they were very close to me in my personal life and that totally backfired against me and it's really coming from a place where I it was totally backfired against me because they were in my life they knew things about information about what I was going through the devil used them to uh, to betray me and, and to completely destroy my my life my ministry so I'm telling you this these are real things Women of God, pastors, ministers, uh, men of God too, you need to have inner strength to push away these people who, who want to barge into your life and claim something. They see The enemy sees your weakness and they use it. That is why Jesus is our only strength. Jesus is our absolute God. He's the only provider of every emotional need. He's the only provider of our every spiritual need, of every um, shakara, physical need. We need to learn how to be spiritually dependent, on, spiritually totally dependent on God, but very independent from other people. 
There are people who will use your weakness to come against you. There are people who will use the information that they have about you to come against you. So Father, I pray for clean boundaries. Today, the word of the Lord is, I keep saying, God is calling us higher. Repent of spiritual, spiritual adultery. Some of the churches uh, are just totally operate out of adultery. That's how you become a cult. Like Korean churches. Uh, I know... You know, these men who abuse their spiritual power and their high position to abuse women, to, to um, demand things out of them that they should not demand things. And so that's how cult, it, it progresses as a cult. It starts off pure, but the more and more you allow these gray areas, it turns into a cult. Do you hear what I'm saying? It starts out pure, doctrinally sane. It starts out good, but then as time passes, because you're allowing these gray areas to increase, the realm of gray area becomes large, and then you invite all these demons, and then you turn into a cult, or you turn into a church that is just ineffective, horrible. So God, I pray for prevention of these things. I pray for clarity. I pray for repentance in this hour. Call us higher. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Some of you, I know even some of the people that I know very closely, I can see totally clearly that it's spiritual adultery. That, you know, <clears throat> when you when your faces light up because you see another another man but you're you know you have an issue with your husband well that's adultery right there you know you you depend on this person you think that this person is better um and this is so rampant let me tell you it's so rampant in in korean churches you have ridiculous situations uh when women women are all over their pastures and you know and and just it, it's it's so rampant that we don't even talk about it because it is rampant and it's very hard to bring up but father i pray for high level of holiness because we are entering into a season of judgment. We're entering into a season of harvest. We're entering into a season of revival. And revival means that fire of God will come and he will deal with the issues of your hearts. What are you truly worshiping? Who are you looking to? Who is your idol? Who is your God? You know, God is going to destroy the idols in this hour. So Father, I pray for cleansing. I pray for repentance. I pray for revelation because without revelation, you cannot repent. Without revelation, you cannot repent. Unless you have an understanding of what the sin is, you can't repent. So I pray for understanding and revelation of what a sin what 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 kind of sin the hearts are committing call them higher father i pray in jesus mighty mighty name that is the word of the lord i feel like i kind of rambled because i don't have my notes with me but i i pray i want you to reply and tell me what uh what spoke to you through this message because i brought this to you because this morning the lord really convicted me of spiritual adultery to talk about it and and repent and call people higher and you need to really, you know, uh, comment on how this speaks to you and how this you see this around you. And I release repentance even this whole week as we prepare for resurrection Sunday. I pray that God would lead you and lead me to a place of higher, higher ground where we are closer to Jesus. That your intimacy with Jesus would just increase. That it will be sanctified. The the realm you have with Jesus, the room, secret room you have with Jesus, will be. Um, just for you and the Lord and not anybody else. So I pray for protection of your relationship with Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.